This is EDUC 4703U, Teaching and Learning, Problem-Based Learning. The analysis questions for this video clip are as follows. Number one, what is the relationship between PBLOs and social constructivism? Number two, how is a community of learners established when PBLOs are used? Number three, where are PBLOs categorized on the grid generated by the intersection of process slash content centered access and the teacher slash student driven access? Number four, what types of problems exist and what are their characteristics? This particular video clip starts taking a look at the theoretical underpinnings for PBLOs. In other words, what is the theory that's underlying the structure um, and, and the construction of PBLOs themselves. So this first uh, slide takes a look at social constructivism uh, very briefly. In general, constructivists believe that each person builds an individual perspective of reality based on his or her experiences and frames of reference. And that learning will occur if students are given opportunities to construct personal meanings out of their experiences, particularly when discussed uh, with their peers. So that's taken from Piaget in 72, von Glasersfeld in 95, Vygotsky in 1978. New conceptions or understandings should be intelligible, plausible, and fruitful. That's a uh, reference to Posner, Strike, Hewson, and Gertzog, 1982. While PBLOs can be used for reflection by individuals working independently, their strength is evident in socially defined spaces where individual perceptions are communicated and debated with others in collaborative processes of conjecture and refutation. That, of course, is a reference to Popper, 1963. More will be said about constructivism in a subsequent video clip. In addition to constructivism, we are also dealing with a concept um, that is referred to as community of practice or community of learners. The scientific, using the very broad definition of this word, academic community, relies on the process of peer review to ensure that a certain standard of rigor and quality is maintained. That's a reference by Wenger, uh, 2000. The community of practitioners, like any other, has certain conditions and standards that determine the strength of the warrants for the knowledge claims. Longino, in 1994, identifies four conditions that a community of practitioners, practitioners must meet if consensus is to count as knowledge rather than mere opinion. Firstly, there must be publicly recognized forums for criticism. Secondly, there must be uptake of criticism. In other words, the community needs to do more than merely tolerate dissent, it must act on it. Thirdly, there must be publicly recognized standards for evaluation of theory and practice. And fourthly, there must be equality of intellectual authority. What is included or excluded must result from critical dialogue rather than the exercise of political or economic power. In this course, all students are required to participate in an online community of learners under such conditions. Taking a look next at uh, learning objects and the basis of the um, categorization of PBLOs as learning objects. Problem-based learning objects, PBLOs, differ from traditional characterizations of learning objects because they do not contain content that is tied directly to curriculum outcomes. They are specifically designed to motivate or to initiate a process rather than to deliver actual curriculum content. The content provided in PBLOs is used more to instigate thinking and discussion, as discussed earlier, um, that is process-centered, than to provide so-called knowledge intended to be acquired by users. As such, PBLOs are dri learner-driven, as the learners build their own context-appropriate solutions to the posed problems. Consequently, PBLOs are not content delivery systems, nor do they offer simulation environments as proposed by Papert in 1980. Since PBLOs also do not collect learner information to then tailor the training to the user, they do not fall into an adaptive technology category where intelligent tutoring systems, um, reference to Wenger 1987, have been prominent. PBLOs in their present iteration contain a problem, 
consistent or problems. Consistent with problem-based learning, PBL approach commonly used in medical schools and engineering. That's a reference to Sabin Baden, 2007. PBLOs do not contain the solution, nor do they propose a method. These are left to the learners to construct. PBLOs can, therefore, be best placed in the upper right quadrant of the grid, as they are both student or learner directed in their use, and the overall orientation of the objects is one of process, as the intent of their use is not specifically to concentrate on specific problems or the solutions, but to focus on the consensually derived understandings arising from the interaction with the objects and the other members of the environment or the community. Further information regarding the organization of learning objects and virtual environments will be discussed in a later clip. The fourth element or component of PBLOs is obviously PBL, problem-based learning. Problems in a PBL environment provide a context within which to learn. Simultaneously, they provide motivation, as the learners already know why they are learning. In other words, to search for problems and then solutions to those problems. Problems can be viewed as objects that cannot be achieved directly as there is some type of obstacle or multiple obstacles which must be overcome. And that's a reference to Watts, 1991. Please refer to the definition of problems given in an earlier video clip. And that is illustrated, that definition is illustrated on the slide in front of you. Problems can be categorized into a variety of levels of complexity depending on how much contextual information is given to the learners. Given and goal problems, again this is a reference to Watts 1991, vary by the type of information given to the learners in that given problems contain statements of both the goal and some suggested strategies to be used to solve the problem and goal problems have the goal stated but no strategies are suggested. A third type of problem, own problems, again a reference to Watts 1991, include neither the goal nor the strategies. Problems of this type consist primarily of a statement of context and the learners are required to identify the problem or problems embedded in the context. In learning contexts such as those employed in PBLOs, learners will collaboratively identify, access and use resources in order to solve problems of all three types described above. The model of problem-based learning used in PBLOs also fits the categorization structure of problem-based learning for professional action as proposed by Sabin Baden 2007. This model has, as its overarching concept, the notion of know-how. Action is seen here as the defining principle of the curriculum, whereby learning is both around what it will enable students to be able to do and around mechanisms that are perceived to enable students to become competent to practice. Since PBLOs combine a rich mix of theoretical elements, multimedia exemplars, and reflective questions, they are used to encourage learners to critique the techniques and activities displayed in the video and to allow the learners to determine the place of those techniques and activities in their own thought processes.